Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. The PCBs have arrived for the signal injector pen that we've been looking at. These are the ones that we designed and we ordered from PCBWay. This video is sponsored by PCBWay and as you can see, they are a manufacturer of high quality PCBs for production, for prototyping, for hobbyists. So if you look at the previous video, I will link it from this one, you'll see that these cost about $2 each. We got five for about $10 or thereabouts. So here they are. They have two sets of vias on the back, two tracks there on the back. And I asked them to make these 10 millimeters wide, which is exactly what they are. So you can see if we just line one up against the, a ruler, uh, you can see that they are exactly 10 millimeters. And that's what I asked for, but it turns out they're actually a bit too wide to fit into the pen. They'll fit into the lid of a pen, as you can see, but they won't actually fit into the pen itself. So what we can do today is actually put one of these together, test it as a signal injector. We can have a little play around with surface mount soldering. And then we can load up the Gerber file, the one that we asked them to produce, and see if we can make these a little bit narrower. Okay, and then hopefully they will fit in the pen. They can't be any narrower than the battery. So let's have a look at the batteries we're going to use. These are the little button cells. I don't have a micrometer, but we can see they're about five, six millimeters wide, let's say six. So I think if we try to make these PCBs seven millimeters wide, and if we can get it to fit on by rearranging it, that would probably actually fit. So we'll get the parts together for this. We have the part list from the previous video, but again, I'll make a note of it so you can see it. And then let's put one of these together and see how well it actually works. Here is the schematic. So you can see we have two 22K resistors, a 150K and a 220K, and we have three 10 nanofarad capacitors. The transistors are MPN. I'm using SO23 surface mount. It really isn't critical what type you use. I'm using 1AM, which is a very common surface mount transistor, but you could use many different ones to be quite honest. So let's get the parts together we need to build this. Here we have the resistors. These are 0603, that's the actual size of the SMD resistors. The capacitors are the same size. I have the 1AM transistors, which are all salvaged, but everyone I've tried always seems to work. The little batteries we've just seen. We have the switch. And then I've actually taken a couple of uh, springy clips from a scrap uh, remote control. So I just found a scrap remote and I desoldered these springy clips from the actual PCB. So I think I'll actually try to use these if I actually effectively solder one here and then cut this little hook off and solder the other one through the hole or bend onto the board, whichever is the way to do it. And hopefully I can get it to sort of sandwich the battery in between and then maybe just put a little bit of tape around for now to hold it in place. So we'll try that and see how well it actually works. I mean, we could actually, I guess, modify this so the battery sits upright, but I think flat is probably going to be best. There's at least a couple of ways I can think to assemble this. One would be to use solder paste. So we just put some tubs of solder paste on, we stick all the components into that, we put it onto a hot plate. I do have some solder paste, but it has a sort of a shelf life, and I'm not sure that what I have is actually any good. Uh, we can have a little bit later, maybe it is no good. But first, let's just try to assemble one of these by hand using the soldering iron. We'll start with the resistors, so we'll do these across the top, and then just work across the board to the capacitors and then the transistors. I think that's probably the way to do this one. So, fairly simple, just add a bit of flux. I'm using my optical microscope, so you'll probably find the picture quality isn't as good on the video, but it's much easier for me, basically, to do it this way. So we'll get a bit of flux on here. Okay. 
And then I'm going to add some solder just to one side of the pads. You'll see I'm using this BC3 tip again. This is a chunky one. I use this for micro soldering, like you guys will know. And you'll look, you'll see how well it actually does it. A little touch, it flows in. This gets a lot of heat in very fast. And I actually find this perfect. Watch, you see, just touching them, yeah. So, in my opinion, you don't need a small tip. With this one, I'm actually using the very edge. You probably noticed. Let's clean it again. So I'm actually using this edge of it, which actually is quite narrow. Let's do some of the resistors. So we'll do the 222K first, which is R1 and R4. And you see I've actually put them on the board. You can see they are marked 223. So that's 22 two followed by three zeros, which is 22K. I've bought some new tweezers, you might notice, but I don't think they're as sharp as the other ones I had to be quite honest. This board's going to move around as I'm doing this and I don't want that to happen so I'm going to stand something heavy on it just to keep it in place while I'm actually working. Okay so I have the resistors basically in place. Yeah, there and there. Just stuck into the sticky flux at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just melt that bit of solder that I placed and basically push the resistor into the solder. So we'll come in again with this tip. I'm using the soldering iron left handed, I'm actually right handed. Okay, look, you see, just one touch and it flowed in very well, yeah? That's one. We'll get the other one. And then just get it flat, yeah? If you have it at an angle, it's not gonna stick. You want it flat on the board. Again, just melt that bit of solder. And that's it, and just slide the resistor in. Okay, so that's one end of each stuck. The other end is the easy one. So to do the other end, we just need a bit of solder. This is 0.2 millimeter. You want quite a narrow one. But if you just touch this, the resistor is gonna come away effectively, it's gonna melt the solder. So I'm gonna hold it down, look, yeah and solder it like so. Again, you can just push on it, and that's soldered, and the same with the other one. So this is how to solder surface mount components by hand. Yeah. And then it goes. So we have those two, and fitting the other two resistors is basically the same, so let's get those fitted. Here we have the 150K, so this is marked 154. That's 1-5 followed by 4 zero, so 150,000 or 150k. This one's going to go here. And then the last one is marked 224, so that's 22 or 22 followed by 4 zeros or 220,000, 220k. And I'm just lining them up as I did with the previous ones. And I'm going to use exactly the same technique as I did before. So edge of the soldering iron. We get the component. Just warm that pad. You'll see I'm not quite so good with my left hand, I am with my right. But I'm good enough. Okay. And this one. You'll find, I'm sure, that as I've found, that soldering surface mount is actually very easy. In fact, you might have even noticed how that kind of pulled in. It's the surface tension of the solder that pulled it that way. As before, the other two ends are going to be easy. A little bit of fresh solder. Just hold it down and bring the solder in there. Yeah. And you can see that's just flowing in nicely. Same with this one. Maybe we'll do a little bit more solder, we'll see. No, that's fine. We have enough. Okay, guys, so those, as you can see, were very easy. Now we'll do the three capacitors. One, two, go back to this one again, and the third one is there. So in this case, I'm actually going to slide the components in using my left hand or my right. I'll swap over, and you'll see if I can do it that way. So a bit of solder, a bit of solder, 
that solder. The SMD capacitors are not polarized, they're not like electrolytic ones. Even the high, like you know, 10 microfarad and 22 microfarad and such like, are not polarized. So you don't have to worry about plus and minus. There's one of them. Second one. You may find, as I'm doing, that sometimes you just have to use two pairs of tweezers just to get them to stay on the board. Okay, another one there somewhere. Put it into the flux. You see, I'm not looking down the microscope and that makes it difficult for me, yeah. I find that a stereo microscope makes this much easier compared with a USB. I know some people disagree with that. But at the end of the day, it's what works for you. Yeah, there's no, there's no right and wrong, guys. This is like whatever works for you, basically. So let's try to do this the opposite way around. So I'm now going to come in right-handed with the soldering iron, left-handed with the tweezers, and let's see how well we can do it. Okay. I'm not so good with my left hand, okay, but I'm good enough. That may not be quite flat, we'll just go again, okay, that's that one. That one is in. And this is basically practice, guys, learning to use both hands. See, I've pushed that flat now, it wasn't flat before. Just try this one. Okay, you see like I'm struggling with that, yeah? That's because I'm right-handed. If you find the same, well, just switch to your preferred hand. <laughs> yeah, simple as. We'll come in the opposite way, okay? And you can see I'm finding that much easier, yeah? Not quite straight, but they're straight enough. And now the last one. So I'll stick with the right-handed on the components. Okay. Soldering iron. There you go. As you can see, this is a really good way to practice your soldering, building little projects like this. Just hold it in place. I'm now left-handed with the tweezers, so I'm switching backwards and forwards, just basically by the orientation of the component. Okay. There we go. Right, just the transistors now, and then the switch and the battery holder. The transistors are no more difficult than the other components were. So you can see we have one here, which is upside down, so we'll just flick it over. I've switched to my old tweezers, by the way, they're slightly sharper, although they're a bit bent. And we want to put some solder on the pads again. I'm going to put the solder on the collector pad, which is the one on this side, for both of them. And then it's a matter of exactly the same thing as we did with the resistor and capacitors, just slide the components in. So you can see a nice little blob of solder's gone there. I'll also add a little bit more flux. Really, you can't put too much flux on. It really doesn't matter. You can wash it all off afterwards. And there we have the transistor. So this is the 1AM. Okay. These are basically all the same pinouts. So this is base, collector, emitter. And that's pretty much like a de facto standard for this type of transistor package. Okay, we're going to go right-handed with the tweezers, left-handed with the soldering iron. Get the soldering iron at the angle I want it. Okay, like so. Transistor. And we're on. Okay. If it's not quite level, I can just push on it a little bit and just melt that again. Yeah.
this one also melt the solder you see how easy that just slides in there okay let's have a two transistors again I can just push out a little bit melt the solder and then it's just a matter of getting the other two legs basically I'll try and do it without the tweezers you might see what happens it may just kind of like the whole thing will float off if we do it this way but that's the fact I did get it once I've got two it'll definitely stay put so if you're gentle you can do it that way that's easier with the transistors that's not so easy with the resistor or capacitor okay so that's all those on we have the probe here we have the switch and we have the battery holder the switch actually just solders to these two pads one two let's have a look to see how well this fits into the place that we have for it so these switches are salvaged again yeah it's going to go across there you can see i need to cut the legs a little bit shorter to get it to fit and bend them a little bit as well i've cut the legs a bit shorter on the switch i'm just tilling the ends off my foot already done one this is the second one okay there's a little bit of solder on there a bit more flux seems to have got it okay so now we can just attach this to our board okay so the switch will then go about here i'm just going to use my fingers to hold it and i'm sure with a bit of flux that bit of solder which is sticking out will just pull in where i want it so let's see and this is the beauty of these chunky soldering iron bits see a lot of these went in very quickly you will probably struggle to that with a fine tip again yeah, same with the other end just get hold of it okay I think that has actually soldered yeah you can see if, if we just tilt it that we have a good solder joint there okay so that's the switch a little bit uneven but we can live with it and then it's just a matter of our improvised battery holder and then we can test this this end will be quite easy so this is going to go here in the middle and i'm just going to effectively cut this off and solder the end down to this pad yes that fits in quite nicely let's see if we can get this to solder it may move but i'm sure we can insert it back where we want it if it does and in fact it didn't move and i think that's soldered down nicely yeah that's got it and then the other one is effectively going to go above this i'll probably put them so they're practically touching so i can then effectively slide the battery in and this will push down and give us the tension we want on the battery this one may be a bit more tricky i've just bent the end it's actually broke off slightly can we get it to fit how we want it possibly not we'll have a go try and bend it in a little bit okay no i may end up actually just moving the other one outwards a bit i think that's probably the best bet so we'll solder this in place and then we'll move the other one it will be more easy or easier plenty of solder on there i can hold the springy thing basically where i want it okay yeah there And they'll come in left handed with the soldering iron. See if I can just get it to go in place. Okay. Just to get the right angle. Okay, we go again. You will not get a fine tip to do this. The problem is getting enough heat into the job.
Okay, that looks pretty good. You can see it's sort of like just above the other one. It's slightly off centre, but I think it's okay. I'll put a bit of tape around, so I'm going to move the other one a little bit further back. There. It's not quite on centre, but I think you'll find that's close enough. Yeah, it bends inwards anyway. Okay, so that's our makeshift battery holder. I'm going to insert the battery like so. You can see it's between the two. It just wants moving back a little bit. And then I'll put a bit of tape around to hold the whole thing in place. So this we can just slide further in. Okay. Yeah, that works pretty good, guys. Okay, let's put a bit of tape on that. And there we have the completed injector. We can test this. So this is my speakers. You probably can't see the clicky. Maybe you can. Okay, so we'll just connect the ground clip. I've actually soldered the ground to one of the emitters. That's ground. I think I will leave a pad on the board where we make the second version, which is going to be smaller. So we can connect the ground. We can connect the speakers to the output. And we can try it. And that gives a nice clean... A nice clean sound. Now, if, if you heard the... One on the very board, it made a sort of a warbling noise. So that definitely works better. We'll have a look now then to let's see if we can make this PCB smaller. We add the ground pad as well. The only problem I have really is the battery holder for these very small button cells. I can't seem to find them. Hopefully one of you guys might know where we can get those from. And if we can get the proper battery holders or we'll come up with some other method than the one I just used. Then we can make these really small, not so thick as that. I mean, obviously you can see it's working well, it's held in there okay. But that is a bit kind of like Heath Robinson, yeah. Let's have a look at the PCB layout. And we're back at Easy EDA. So this is the actual project, which I think I can just open, we can have a look. Yep, there is our schematic. So the schematic is going to stay the same. I just want to add a pad for the ground. So let's add some sort of pad to the ground. Here we have a connector, we'll use one of these. And we can attach this to ground. I can stick it anywhere to be quite honest, it's on the ground. We can put it over here, it doesn't really matter where it goes. Let's just wire it in. Okay. There's our pad. We'll save that. Now let's make the PCB again. So we go to Design, con Convert Schematic to PCB. Okay. Again, we want a two layer board, rectangular, and we need to put the size in. So the width we'll leave at 42. I think it actually was 45 before. But the height we will make it down to 7 millimeters. Okay, and there is our little PCB. Now let's try to place the components again and get them on the board. We'll start off with the battery, which is going to be at the back. This is the wrong symbol, but it effectively gives us the pads where we can solder to. And now we want the button, and I'm going to rotate the button this time. Okay, I've rotated it to the right. We can zoom in a little bit. We can put it a little bit closer here. That is actually too wide for our PCB. That is a shame. Okay, we'll have to go back the other way, I guess. Unless we effectively found a different button that was smaller. This we can move back to here a little bit. And this I'm going to rotate again. So we'll just choose the button. And let's just rotate it again. Rotate left. Okay. We now have our button. Let's see if it will fit anyway. So this goes here. Now we just need to place the components again. So I'm going to put the resistors in this time all in a line. So there is R1. Okay. We'll have R2. 
rotated. I think actually it was a there was some button to do this. Yep, space. We'll have C1. Space. We'll have uh, the other resistors. R3. Space. R4. Space. Have we got enough room to get C2 in? Let's have a look. Okay. We can move this one over here a little bit. This one can come with it. This one can come with it. Space. And now I think we can actually line these all up to even the spaces. Let's try it. Distribute horizontally, I believe, is the one we want. Yeah. And then we can align them all up. So we can go to align bottom. Okay, they will line up nicely. Now let's try to get our transistors on. We have one more capacitor as well. Q1 is going to kind of go over this side. Q2 sort of there. Okay. And then these are our two pads. This one is actually the ground pad. Okay. And this is the probe. So the probe we can put over here. And this capacitor I think we can put near the probe. Right, let's see what we have. So we have Q1. We can rotate that this way. No, I think it actually fits better that way. Q2. J2 is the ground tab. Which I think we can put over here. Okay. C3 is the output capacitor which we can fit here and then J1 can kind of go in there. Okay. I think this will only fit if I effectively remove the labels. I don't think there's any space for the labels anymore. What happens? Okay, I'm actually going to delete the labels. If I can get them. I'll try and just align the two transistors. Better select them both, but it's also selected this. I didn't want to. Try again. Okay, it's selected them. We can align the tops. Okay. That's fairly lined up. And we actually have actually have this now fitting. I can just remove this label. Always put it down here. Okay. Label can go. So we have a layout now. Let's save that and let's see whether this will now generate a PCB for us. File, save. And then we can try to make the PCB. So root, auto root. Let's see what it does. Okay. Run. Yep, it's done it. It's done. There are more wires in the board, but it's done it. Zero failed. Okay. And we have our board. It, it's managed to make that. To create the Gerber file, we go to File, Generate PCB Fabrication File, Gerber. Please save your file. Okay, so we save our work. Save, File, Generate PCB Manufacture File. Okay. We can tell it to do the design rule check. This will just make sure that nothing is too close to anything else. Okay, and we have it. There's our PCB. All the hard work was done for us. And we can generate the Gerber. And here we are on PCBWay's website. 
It's very simple to order PCBs. I will show you as I did on the previous video. We go to PCB Instant Quote. We go to Quick Order PCB. And we add the Gerber file. So I put it on Drive D. My Documents. And there is the Gerber file. So we can open this. And we have our PCB now 8 millimeters wide. I'll leave all the settings as they are, apart from the solder mask, which I would like to have red. Again, we can see that it's $5 to make the PCBs, three to four days. The total cost with shipping is $8.91. I'm using the global standard shipping. There's lots of other options I can use. There are express ones. There's AliExpress standard as well. But to be quite honest, the other one came quite fast, so I'm quite happy to use that one. And actually, it was the cheapest option. So there we have the total for our order again for five PCBs. That is less than two euros per PCB. And we can save these to the cart. OK, and I have logged in and there is the order waiting to be built. So what will happen now? is PCB where we'll actually check over to make sure there are no problems in making that PCB. And if everything's okay, then they ask me to make payments. I make the payment and they will get shipped to me by my chosen shipping method. And there we have it, guys. So we have the second batch of PCBs on order. I will also order some new solder paste because the stuff I have has gone all hard. It doesn't keep forever, it has a shelf life, and I have had it sitting there for a few years. So when the next batch of PCBs turn up, we will use the solder paste instead, and we can look at building the board that way to see how much easier or more difficult it is to do that. Yeah, <laughs> time will tell. So really, the only question now, pretty much to you guys, is how do we get a battery holder, or where can we get a battery holder small enough for our battery so it's held much closer down on the board we don't have this sticking up so far okay i hope you can see yet again how easy it is to prototype things how to get your project up and running when we finished we can upload this to pcbways shared project section with the schematic with the bill of materials with the gerber files and if you did that yourself you can make 10% commission on any PCBs that are sold for that project. Okay, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you all soon on another Word Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.